Okay, I'm back. I think this is my fifth video on gates that I've done in this new series. I've just been upgrading my ability to speak on these gates to explore with you. This is not, hey, I'm an expert. Let me tell you everything about gate 61. But I also did look at videos online and I said, I just, it's just not enough. I'm getting too much personality traits and not enough of the core substance of what these gates are all about. And, and some of them did okay, but I don't want any more four, five, six minute videos about a gate that's too surface level. Um, I want to talk with the people here that want to just like go in depth on something. And today we're going to go in depth on 61, um, which um, uh, if you've done these videos before, we look at the information, which I've gathered tons, dozens of pages of information about gate 61, and I've ran it through AI helps with prompts that I've worked hours on and, and just to develop lenses at which to look at this gate and the data, um, from the gate and, and it's fun. It's fun to look at these lenses. I would like to read part of this new lens that I've worked on. I like Jordan Peterson's way of communicating. And, and so therefore taking a little bit of, of this lens of how he would communicate it, I thought would be fun for us to do. Another lens that I, I would prefer, like we start on because I've called it the gate of Inner, the inner gaze of wisdom's mystery. But um, what have other places call it? Um, human design typically calls it inner truth. So wisdom, truth, similar, inner. It's that like inner gaze. It's introspection. It's what it's about. Now, it's also been called the divine door, the mystic, mystery, inspiration, all those sorts of things. Because if you took the core words... And what's interesting is I actually do uh, textual analysis on everything that we're using and see the frequency of some of the of the words that are being used. Inner truth, mystery, inspiration, deep, introspective, wisdom, seeking, unique, pressure. So there's there's a yeah, I mean that's just one of the analysis that we do and like we see how correlated each of these sources that I've worked with how correlated they are on on this interest understanding now they're thematic clusters inner truth plus wisdom mystery and the unknown inspiration and creativity mental pressure and seeking answers so um that's just one of the sections we've got a bunch of different analyses that we analyses that we run and we go ahead we grab key quotes and then we find the core words and and uh, like philosophical questions and we talk about hobbies and careers which if you're interested you can look at this of course and challenges and growth which is actually quite an interesting uh, lens to look at it but I find that it comes after oh, now you can use these to understand the core principles but they are very beneficial after you understand the core principles as well. You know, the lens is what you out there are making of it. In past videos, I've kind of gone with the more typical approach of like, what is the personality like of someone with a defined 61? Okay. Today, um, and I, I do love the interview questions. Um, I've found these... Um, very beautiful. I, let's do one for a second. I do want to get to that um, kind of conversation lens, uh, Peterson-esque lens, and, and give you an idea of it so you can give some feedback. But how about this question for a second? How often do you find yourself seeking deeper understanding and personal uh, truth in your daily life? So this is me talking with someone that doesn't know anything about human design, doesn't know anything about gay 61, and I'm just getting to learn from them. 
Um, in what ways do you feel your inner wisdom influences major life decisions? Like, oh, okay, like, now we're having a conversation about inner wisdom. Um, introspection. Um, do they... How comfortable are you with them? Um, to what extent do you rely on your intuition when exploring spiritual or philosophical concepts? How do you balance your need for deep introspection with your interactions in the external world? Um, oh, so I, you know, typically also maybe I would highlight a couple of my favorite of these. So when I go back to talking to someone about this, I, I have those handy. All right. So you get the idea of the lenses and I will talk about these often and kind of peruse them so that you think, yeah, I can look at something in various ways. And then it's kind of like, I will start to solidify it because Whoever comes to me with different questions, or I need to explain it to them in a different lens, I have these available. So as a learner, maybe one of these lenses, two of these lenses are what you need. As an educator, you may need a decent amount. By the way, I do have a great, a great mnemonic that we worked on for this that I'm pretty proud of. But I'm going to make you wait for a second. I'm going to read part of the Peterson one. Uh, not the whole entire thing. Listen. You possess a profound yearning for truth. That's embedded deep within your being. This isn't a trivial matter. It's a fundamental aspect of your psyche that's driving you towards mysteries of existence. Now, note, just as my side note. What I understand of the head center, the top center in human design, is that it's about mental pressure. So um, this idea of, of where it's saying that's driving you towards the mysteries of existence, that's kind of this idea of what the head center does. It, it puts pressure on someone. Um, anyways, to figure it out, you know, like it, it puts pressure on on the Ajna, the, you know, the, the, other, the next center down. All right. Now, embracing this inner gaze of wisdom's mystery. By the way, side note, I, I do a very long process of trying to find the, uh, the perfect name. I've actually contemplated, you know, it gave me mystic wisdom. It, I was okay with it. And then I thought a little bit more about it. Too many people take that idea of mystic, mysticism, as opposed to mystery. So the mysticism, like the things that we'll never know and that are weird and they're out there. Um, it's not what this is about. It's more about unknown wisdom. So um, it's inner gaze on unknown wisdom. The inner gaze on unknown wisdom. Um, I have, that one's pulling ahead. As I talk more and more about this, I, I changed my mind. I think it is the inner gaze on unknown wisdom or inner gaze of wisdom's mystery. Nope. I think it's inner gaze of unknown wisdom. So I had it down here as number two. And we are using, this is Notion, by the way, it's amazing. And um, we're going to make that one secondary now. And we are going to take this. And it is official, folks. You saw it here live. I changed the name, Inner Gaze on Unknown Wisdom. There's a lot into that word. It, but I also want to make sure that it's memorable. I think that one rolls off the tongue a little bit better. Inner Gaze an unknown wisdom. It's a little bit longer than some people's, but not much. It's like one word longer, but mm, it works. I think it really works. Okay. Um, so it's a, both a gift and a responsibility. You see, when you're compelled to seek the unknown, 
You're standing on the edge between order and chaos. Yeah, that's very Peterson-esque. That's where the meaningful discoveries happen. It's a place of great potential, but also significant risk. The introspection you engage in is not just navel gazing. It's a necessary journey into the depths of your own consciousness. It's where you confront the dragons of chaos in your mind that lurk within. And by doing so, you have the opportunity to bring back valuable insights that can transform your life and the lives of others. All right, this is where I take a moment and I share a little bit. There are three gates in the head. It seems like their roles tend to be bringing in information. This is, I was taught from the beginning of my learnings of human design that the that the head center is like a satellite that brings in information and the mind or the ajna is the one that processes it so this is fun to hear it talk about this concept of like 61 is it's this journey in to to the where the dragon's lair is the chaos is and you are finding pulling you know like the hordes that he is sitting on top of that dragon is sitting on t hordes of unknown wisdom wisdom it's wisdom it's that more valuable than gold and he's sitting on it and you're headed to that chaos dragon and you're finding this isn't even my mnemonic device but i man it needs to be hmm because that is a valuable part of it because it's not just oh inner wisdom that's how we know something. No, it's like where you're going to find the information, you still got to process it in the Ajna. Okay, but it can transform your life and others. So I wonder what circuit that means that it is. Human design, we've got the circuits that it's like uh, the, the tribal circuit, the group circuit, but like, are you bringing this back to share with the community? Um, hmm. Okay. But here's the challenge. You might become overwhelmed by the vastness of the unknown. The mental pressure to understand everything can lead to paralysis. If you're not careful, uh, it may lead to paralysis if you're not careful. It's crucial to balance your quest for inner truth with practical action in the world. Otherwise, you risk falling into nihilism or despair which is a dark place where meaning is lost. So what should you do? Take responsibility for your gift. Structure your exploration with discipline. Set your house in order before you criticize the world. <laughs> Peterson. Okay, that means grounding yourself in daily routines and habits and support your well-being. Engage with the world even as you delve into your mysteries. Remember, meaning is found on the border between chaos and order. Where you're stable enough to stay intact, but challenged enough to grow. I read that one again. Meaning is found on the border between order and chaos where you're stable enough to stay intact, but challenged enough to grow. Um, so therefore, to the 61, your ability to access profound wisdom is a rare asset. But wisdom isn't just about knowledge, it's about action. It's about embodying the truths you discover and integrating them into your life. Share your insights with others in a way that's Structure. Articulate your thoughts clearly so they become a guiding light rather than the source of confusion. Now, um, yeah. I love it. Okay. I have another new lens. So today you're, you're getting them, you're getting them thrown at you. This one's more scriptural. This one's more like giving a talk at church. So indulge me. We haven't talked too long about the subject yet. 
um, I like to go in depth, so this is one way of doing it. I, I also don't feel like I always have to finish these. You can read them on the screen. Pause if you need. Brothers and sisters, today I feel prompted to speak about the profound journey of seeking divine wisdom through personal revelation. In our mortal experience, we often find ourselves yearning to understand the mysteries of God. As the Apostle James counseled, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to man liberally. James 1.5 Each of us is invited to embark on an inner journey, a sincere search for truth that draws us closer to our Heavenly Father. This pursuit requires introspection and a humble heart, willing to receive guidance from the Holy Ghost. As we read in the Book of Mormon, feast upon the words of Christ, for behold, the words of Christ will tell you all things that you should do. 2 Nephi 32.3 um, Yeah, okay. Okay, so it's, it's getting this, like if you are a religious person, a churchgoer, I could see how this could resonate with you. Like it's talking a little bit more, whew, sorry, your language. Now, I want to keep in mind that human design says that we access, we go out and we find the satellite brings in information in a few different ways. This is one of those ways, um, kind of looking, going out to the dragon, he's guarding the gold, you're on this border of chaos, and you're working at it, and you are, uh, it's introspective. A dragon sometimes inside, and maybe it's not even an inner, it's like this, it's God is sitting on them. He's like, oh, you've come. Here you are. Here's, I'm sitting on this gold pile of wisdom. Here it is. Other ways, the other two gates here are um, that sometimes we bring in information because of our willingness to question and to ask. Not question like, I doubt, I doubt, I doubt. That's like, 17 but it's like I ask I ask and it not just ask someone else but ask inside ask of something you know ask like me I this is my gate 61 obviously we have all gates I, that's my soapbox every time I have 61 it isn't defined on a human design chart but I know I have that and it maybe is fluctuates more because that's what it means when it's not defined. It just means, hey, it, it fluctuates more. Or it doesn't, it's the other ones need to be, or, you know, like they, they are all there. And maybe it's even healthy. Maybe even, even decently consistent. Just because it's not marked doesn't mean you have it. You go through and you watch all these videos. Not just the ones that are defined. Because there's something there for you to learn about yourself. Maybe it's on a very low, and you're like, I should consider working on that gate. Um, and, and the ones that are defined, you're like, hey, I can use this gate to help understand the other gates. This 61 for me, not defined on my chart, the only one in the, in the head center that isn't defined. But I, that means I can use the other two. The gate of someone that like let me figure it out let me question let me ask ai prompts questions like how can i formulate this question and then i'm the person over there on gate 64 which is usually on the left i'm pointing to the left 63 on the right 64 on the left 61 in the middle um it's visual it's there there's only three of them makes it easy but 64 is just like dump it all onto the table dump all that information onto the table you go out even if they work together 60 61's like I'm going to the the dragon guarding all the wisdom and I'm grabbing it and bringing back barrels full you know there's so much still there to think that we could ever get all of the loot and of wisdom and blessings from God that we could gather it all bring it back pour it on the table is just ridiculous claim to think that you're ever going to even 
grasp and bring back the wisdom of God. <laughs> Put it on the table and you're like, oh, it's like a tiny drop in the bucket compared to mountains full of little tokens, coins, anyways. And you put it on the table and it seems like an overwhelming amount, but that just makes the gate 64 person happy. Put all the pieces on the table. I can handle the confusion. Through all of this information on the table, it leads to more information. There's so much there. Ooh, I'm going to pile on more. Like it, it's, I get like all those things bring up more questions and introspection, you know, and thoughtfulness. And that makes me want to go back to the dragon horde and grab more. And that makes me put it on the table. And, oh, there's more. And it's just like, it's this, they work all three of them together so well. It's so fun. The, the visuals is there for me. This isn't what this video was meant to be about, but I'm loving it. Okay. Anyways. It is this idea of, if you lack wisdom, ask of God. If you lack wisdom, don't just ask of God. Go to the forest and pray. Go, you know, be on your knees. Or sit, like Peterson would say, sit on your bed. If you don't believe in God, you still need to pray. You still need to sit on your bed and ask something. God, yourself, you still need to, like, think about it. Say, what is it? You are going into uh, that place, that introspection, which is 61 is about, that introspection. And you're thinking, okay, what I'm going to bring out, that's not the end of the job, though. If you brought it out, boom. That's the head center's role. It's there now. And, and you, you, you bring in more information, you introspection it, and you like this is that's not figuring it out that's just having the information <laughs> then you go to the ajna center the next little center down below that's where you're you're figuring it out okay all right so each of us is invited to embark on an inner journey a sincere search for truth that draws us closer to heavenly father oh then it said feast feast on the words Christ. Feast. Go to the feast. Get that food. Okay. However, this path is not without challenges. We may encounter moments of doubt or feel overwhelmed by the vastness of what we do not know. When you're there at the vaults with all that hordes of, of gold tote coins and you're just like, ah, that's so much. It's the, you know, gate 64 talking, like, sometimes some of us are just like, I love it. I love that there's so much. It makes me feel okay with the questions and doubts that I have. Well, you're okay with the questions and doubts because you see a vast mounds of wisdom that you haven't even scratched the surface because you grabbed this handful and there's a billion kilo kilotons still left and you grabbed this little handful but that 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 vastness makes some of us feel okay like it's okay that i don't understand this because it's answerable because look at all those coins they answer it in there somewhere and i'm excited to keep going back If you grab those coins and throw them on the table and you're just excited about it. <laughs> well, I didn't think this would happen. It's just a beautiful, it's not sad at all, it's a beautiful concept. But, understandably, that gate of, like, confusion, the gate of, like, of question can lead someone to look at it like doubt it's 
someone else can just be overwhelmed. And someone else can be like, I'm not going back. That was hard. The dragon... He scratched me. <laughs> Wish there was a pause button. I do not know of such thing. On this app that I use. Um... I, I feel Burpee pull that. In this journey to learn, they. <laughs> their perspective is such that they look at it and they're like, well, what I grabbed, the answers aren't there. It must be broken. Something. It doesn't. Nihilism. As we learned from the other one, they're just like, forget it. It's all meaningless. Forget it. God doesn't know. He's got it wrong with the people that say they understand you know, the mind and will of God. They've got it screwed up too. But I think I think it's beautiful when you see the mounds the mountains gold coins that all re represent wisdom. You go in there and you've got a backpack and you fill up your backpack and you make the long, arduous trek back. You share it with the community. Someone looks at it it's like, but that doesn't answer this. And you're like, that's... Yeah, but if you saw what I saw, that there's so much there still. Let's be excited because we can go back. Our personal quest for understanding is much like the brother of Jared's experience. When faced with the daunting task of crossing the ocean in darkness, he sought the Lord's guidance with faith and humility. The Lord did not provide immediate answers, but invited him to ponder with faith and humility. The Lord did not provide immediate answers, but invited him to ponder and seek solutions. Through this process, the brother of Jared's faith grew, and he witnessed the Lord's finger touch the stones, illuminating the journey. Um, we too can receive divine il illumination as we earnestly seek and align our will with God's um, this requires us to be still and know that he is God. Psalms 46.10 In the quiet moments of reflection and prayer, we open ourselves to receive heavenly wisdom that can guide our choices, deepen our understandings. Let us also remember that the journey is not for solely for our benefit. This is that a uh, like circuit thing. So um, if they're bringing this up, if the AI is bringing this up, it's wanting to, it, it means that that's what that is. It's as we gain gator insight, we draw closer to the savior. We're better prepared to serve others. That's what I'm trying to be is serve and share insights. Um, our experiences can become a beacon for those who struggle. It's too close to home from what I was talking about earlier. And friends. Ah, uh, they don't need to see my face. You can read, right? <laughs> wow, this was so unexpected. 
It's just so beautiful, really. Um... The Lord, the dragon, sitting on the mounds of wisdom, desires to share with us as we embark on this journey, the hero's journey, gate 28, by the way, let us do so with faith and patience and a heart willing and a mind willing to receive, a head willing to receive. In doing so, we will not only find answers to our deepest questions, but also draw nearer to Christ, who is the source of truth. Well, what a journey. So my mnemonic needs to change. That's obvious. Because <laughs> that was quite the emotions that will now be tied to this idea forever. <laughs> we had a wizard. But I think that's the hero now. On his hero's journey. And I'm fine if he has a big, enormous head. Let me remember that it is the head center. And I'm fine if he has a pointy wizard hat to kind of connect mystery <laughs> because mystic mystery mysticism um, deep mysterious truths I'm fine with that but he's also got a big backpack that's for sure now that wasn't in there before but he's got a backpack <laughs> um, and he well I had before that he had six fingers with dice because that's two um, you can see my face again I'm back that he had and I wanted to use my hands so he had two dice he's rolling the dice inside of his head that's mnemonics work they're crazy right dice six sided six hand, six fingers dice inside of his head the inner introspection and he rolls a 61 so it just levels of remembering 61 but I I'd like to think that he has a he has a, a bag now uh, a backpack and he's got a he's got a sword because he's a hero and he's headed off uh, to the dragon slayer and um, there's fog, thick fog, the mists of darkness, heading through the tree of life, Nephi's vision. This is the fog. That's the fog. And his inner sight um, uh, allows him to see. But I think we're talking more now Um, so, yeah, you've got uh, the fog, which can be making things hard, the confusion, um, and the veil of mystery, but we got to have this guy go into the dragon's layer now. I just can't have it not be that. So, um, now the shadow expression his head, which was already abnormally large, grows heavy, too heavy, he grows massively too big, and he doesn't go anywhere. Uh, well, maybe, yeah, he doesn't go anywhere. He's trying to mentally solve every mystery. He's weighed his backpack down. Maybe that's what it can be. He's put too much in his backpack. And he can't move too much. He's got the backpack on his head because it's mental pressure or obsession with trying to solve everything. There you go. Ah, 
so beautiful goes to the hordes we talked about this already he goes to the dragon and we can look at it like in the perspective of god guarding they all have like all the little coins maybe have a little w on it wisdom it's just lots of wisdom he goes fills up a respectable amount not overburden it not sitting there he's not staying in the halls with the dragon it's a beautiful place to be i'm sure it's a good dragon it's god um but this hero as a good hero in the hero's journey should do brings it back brings it back shares it with the community peterson would be very happy with that analogy but he brings it back because this is what this gate is about it's a gate a, a circuit of community a circuit of bringing it back to your tribe i don't know if it's tribe or actually don't know the circuit in particular um ah, man this is beautiful uh thanks for indulging me um I definitely learned as I did it, which if we connect it, like I, that is my, I am two centers. I'm as close to a reflector, in my opinion, from what I understand, as you could be, um, and not be a reflector, because I have two gates, and they're the gates that represent outer authority. When I'm talking out loud, some things just come to me, and I'm just like, it clicks. It's not uh, the solar plexus emotional, like, oh, it feels, it emotionally feels great. It's not the gut, like, oh, that, that's, I get it. It's not the splenic, it's not the ego, it's not the, uh, those, all those authorities. It's the mental, environmental, it's the no inner authority, like a reflector, where it's just like, it, can't, it comes in certain moments after spending a lots of time putting this all together in a moment just it comes crashes in and you're like and it works so beautifully when it's together with i also have the gate 43 which is just this breakthrough now there's 47 which i also have is so now you can kind of if you understand these things understand how my works and then when i say i have them we all have them but i have it defined it's more consistent and it's it's heavy also it's like it's it's up there in my life that this is how i think things just kind of breakthroughs frequently which i i know that that's a great wonderful gift in my life and it's been beautiful and i've always been appreciative of it now ask me to logically go step by step through things and process things out and do that hard hard work inside of the ajna the processing center and that's not my that's not my skill set that's like my brother like step by step i gotta figure it out i'm just like breakthroughs that's when i'm talking out loud and just like or talking to a friend breakthroughs and it's beautiful um and so that's when i was talking you can see it like a breakthrough or aha moment 47 aha 43 breakthrough that's how i remember it I haven't run it through and gave it this new name, but the inner gaze on unknown wisdom, the inner gaze on wisdom. I kind of almost want to connect it to wisdom's treasure. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I've got some, I've got some names, inner gaze on wisdom's treasure. That will definitely connect my ideas that I, in this moment that I've had, and hopefully that you have had with me. I think that becomes number two. Inner, uh, it could be number one. Inner gaze on wisdom's treasure. Ah, screw it. We're putting it number one, people. Of course we are. How could I not have an experience like that? 
and not call it not call it that. Hmm. I, I mean, you could call it the the hero's journey to <laughs> find wisdom. No, we aren't going to call it that. Mm -hmm. I just, I kind of almost am just like in this beautiful state where I'm just like, I don't want to stop considering all this beauty and wisdom that we just discussed it resonated so much. I don't think I'll forget 61, which is not defined inside of my human design chart. If that goes to show anything, it resonates so strong with me. It it maybe isn't a consistent flow in my life, but it I feel it deeply. I'm on a high now. That's that's how gate definitions work. You have the gate. You have this. You have this ability. You can lack wisdom and go to the drag, you know, go on this journey, a hero's journey. Hero's journey is hard. Check out Gate 28. It is fraught with problems. It is, Gate 28 is about fear of death, fear of meaninglessness. It's, it's hard. And you go there in seeking. If you lack wisdom, you find that. You go on that journey. I think the dragon is God that has all this. You may go to another dragon, a lesser dragon, <laughs> that's sitting on lots of beautiful insights. And bring it back and share it. And then you find another one. Eventually that dragon's going to run out. He's got a little bit. You go to another one. It's like he's got a lot. And they exact their own um, requisite, you know, cost on the person that comes. That's for sure. But he gives liberally and abradeth not. What does that even mean? Anyways. Alright, that's it. I just, I've been sitting with it. And just talking while I'm sitting with it. I can sit with it, with it not recording. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you later.